Chinese fast fashion firm Xi'an is facing new legal challenges to his business practices. Yeah, three designers filed a civil lawsuit in California accusing the company of repeatedly stealing designs from other artists. The lawsuit alleges that Xi'an creates as many as 6,000 new items per day, all based on stolen designs through a coordinated illegal operation. That's the lawsuit's language. The suit also claims that the practices violate the Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act, better known as RICO, a law enacted in the 1970s to help law enforcement prosecute organized crime. Joining us now is Susan Scafidi. She's the founder and director of the Fashion Law Institute at Fordham University. Susan, it's, you know, when you read the headline, when you start trying to understand how could something that's copyright uh, be be discussed and be uh, potentially tried in this lawsuit as a RICO case, it makes no sense. Uh, but the first thing I want to ask you about is the jurisdiction issue. This is a lawsuit that's filed in California, but of course, uh, this is a Chinese company. Talk to us about whether or not the U.S. courts uh, have that kind of jurisdiction to make them pay. You're correct, Lilia and Tony, this is a Chinese company. However, it does a lot of business in the U.S. It advertises in the U.S., it avails itself of the U.S. market, it even actually has offices in the U.S. So it does have that kind of substantial connection to California and to the United States that allows for jurisdiction. Maybe not personal jurisdiction over their founder, but certainly jurisdiction with regard to the company. So, Susan, I think, could you help us understand a basic thing here that I think might confuse people? It certainly uh, confuses me. So, if someone wrote a book and I copied that book and put my name on it, uh, I could be sued. It would definitely be plagiarism. But in fashion, if you take a design and just a straight rip of that design, it's not necessarily a copyright infringement? You're absolutely right. Under U.S. law, and the U.S. is not is less protective of fashion than many other jurisdictions, but under U.S. law, many copies of three-dimensional garments would not be protected. However, we do have some protection for things like the design on the front of a t-shirt, the two-dimensional part, or fabric print. We also certainly have protection for labels and logos under trademark rather than copyright. And this lawsuit is about both. And you know the the details in the in that the uh, plaintiffs are alleging are are remarkable. I mean, we're talking about these specific words and all that. But I want to talk about something else uh, regarding Sheen that's very troublesome. In May, a group of lawmakers asked the SEC to hold off on an IPO, an initial public offering by Sheen, until it proved that it does not use forced labor in China. And that's something that has been discussed, given the remarkably cheap prices of the clothing. Where does that stand? Lilia, I'm glad you brought that up. That is part of the background noise of this lawsuit. Part of the reason why it shows up in the complaint in this lawsuit is to give the court the impression that Xi'an is a bad actor overall. But yes, Xi'an has been investigated uh, preliminarily, it's an issue a brief written in Congress indicating that Xi'an has in fact used forced labor, uh, used cotton harvested via forced labor, which of course has some really bad cultural historical resonances in the U.S. as well. We don't like the idea of slaves picking cotton. Uh, and therefore, we have an act that prevents the use of, of any kind of cotton uh, that is harvested via forced labor hmm. in imports brought into the U.S. The, Xi'an has also been accused of other kinds of labor violations having to do with sweatshops and wage theft, again, in China. And we really just don't want to be a party to that. And so that's part of the concern with regard to this company. And you're right, they have denied uh, being on the verge of issuing an IPO. However, it has certainly been, as rumors were circulating about an IPO, it's certainly been one of the things we were concerned about. And something that customers should also uh, be aware of, at least the yeah. accusations. Susan Scafidi, thank you. Founder and director of the Fashion Law Institute at Fordham. Thank you very much. My pleasure.